Hi everyone, Pao here again, and this is my fifth book summary after the 52 week challenge, wherein I'm going to read one book a week, hoping to complete 52 books within the span of one year or 52 weeks. So today's topic of choice is the book called Think Again by Adam Grant. So Adam Grant is a famous author uh, of the number one New York Times bestselling book originals, and this is his uh, most recent book, which was released this February 2021. And it's quite interesting, uh, this book. It was quite a short read, but I enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll be able to share my top key, key takeaways from the book. And hopefully you learn something from it, right? So I'm sharing my screen. Uh, just making sure I shared my audio. Okay. So again, uh, the book is called Think Again uh, by Adam Grant. So today's the fifth book uh, summary I'm going to do. And let's go straight at it. So here are the few key takeaways. I have five key takeaways. Why you must think as like a scientist. The concept of preacher, prosecutor, politician, and scientist. The pitfalls of confirmation and desirability bias. The benefits of the term confidence, humility, and finally, uh, interesting, I have a, they, he gave a case study about Jeff Bezos for asking this simple question, but really makes sense. So let's get straight at it, right? So key takeaway number one of the book, Think Again. So why you must think like a scientist. Uh, let's start with the quote, right? The purpose of learning is not to affirm our beliefs, but rather evolve our beliefs. Haven't we all been in that situation wherein we have uh, certain assumptions about a certain thing, or we have preconceived biases, right? The problem of most people is that they get too attached to their opinion, uh, despite there are newly presented facts to protect pride, to protect face. They actually still stand, uh, they still choose to be firm with their uh, stance, be uh, you know, very persistent in per in sharing their ideas. So the concept of thinking like a scientist is, if you look at scientists by professions, by their profession rather, science perform scientists perform multiple tests and experiment through constant iterations. They are uh, you know experimenting to find out whether their initial hypothesis is actually true or do they have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Meaning, if they want to conduct an experiment, they first start with the hypothesis or what are, uh, based on the data they have, what are their predictions of the certain outcome. And through experimentation, they are able to accept or reject the null hypothesis on whether or not um, you know, the initial hypothesis that they thought or prediction and outcome that they thought is actually true or holds true or is it rejected based on the new evidence and testing, right? So the beauty about being uh, a scientist or having a scientist mindset is that you're not tied to your initial assumptions uh, because, again, scientists, their job is actually to conduct multiple tests. So basically, you know, it does not hurt their ego in case that they're able to uh, disprove their initial hypothesis. Actually, as a scientist, this is actually could be a breakthrough of a new finding if ever they're able to uh, find new evidence and reject the null hypothesis. So I think key takeaway there is, you know, have a more curious mindset rather than simply uh, trying to win any argument, win any conversation rather than Force your idea, um, you know, try to listen and understand the, co the opinions of others, new sets of data to get a better understanding of how you can improve um, the way you view things or your perception towards a certain matter, right? So again, the purpose of learning is not to affirm our beliefs, but rather evolve and improve our beliefs. So I think that's one key takeaway. The second key takeaway, which I love, by the way, is the concept called the preacher, prosecutor, politician, and scientist. So these are the four archetype, archetypes on that we sometimes tend to default to, right? So the first one is preacher. Haven't we always been or have haven't we always been in that situation wherein we so we're so passionate about an idea that we constantly pitch this idea, we do 
do sermons to a lot of people, a lot of friends about our ideas, or opinions. And whenever they try to, um, you know, have conflicting ideas, we we make sure that we protect and promote our ideas. That our ideas is right, and we try to get our message across. So like preachers, uh, they, you know, their main job is to reach as much people as they can and spread the word uh, as much to as much people as they can. So that's the first archetype, preacher, you know. Uh, the second one is prosecutor. So for example, you, you keep on meeting a lot of friends, you talk to a lot of people, share your ideas, you're bound to meet someone who would scrutinize your idea. So when that happens, when you feel like you're being questioned by another person, you tend to default to a prosecutor uh, archetype, right? So prosecutor is whenever we see conflicting information, our default pattern or our default behavior is to disqualify, automatically disqualify counter arguments by identifying and highlighting flaws. So haven't we experienced wherein we receive conflicting ideas, we, instead of rather viewing it as potentially uh, improving our thoughts or assumptions, we immediately spot flaws on his or her argument and try to discredit him or her, right? So you're so single focused on your idea, you tend to disregard conflicting opinions, uh, which can perhaps be useful to further improving your idea, right? And when that happens, uh, you also have the tendency to act like a politician. So, you know, this 2022, it's the coming elections for the Philippines. And, you know, the common perception of a politician is you try to win support, you try to win voters, you try to win people who believe in your idea. So because of this, you know, you continue to promote your idea, you continue to gain allies, and uh, you tend to push away uh, those who dec discredit you. Well, in fact, you know, uh, these people who have contradictory ideas can actually be beneficial for you because you may be blindsided uh, by by certain biases and so on and so forth. And these contrarians uh, actually elevate or expand your knowledge, which you can further improve on. And lastly is the scientist, right? These are the people who um, don't really, uh, are, not, are not much, uh, you know, emotionally attached to their thoughts, ideas, but rather they constantly um, conduct tests, and then whenever they read uh, new information or receive new information, um, they'll, they'll happily accept it and incorporate it into their assumptions, perceptions, and even plans, right? So again, these are the four archetypes we tend to default to. Uh, I go back to takeaway number one is sometimes when you feel that you are overly protective to your initial idea or thoughts or opinions, maybe it's about time to take a step back and think more like a scientist. Rather than identify yourself with that opinion or stance, uh, try to be more um, open-minded and collaborative and really listening, actively listening on whether or not there is value in these contradictory ideas, right? The third one is the pitfalls of confirmation and desirability bias. So the first one is confirmation bias, right? Is we are very biased to the things we expect. Like for example, if we want, uh, you know, if we uh, know someone who is very uh, thrifty, who is very, um, you know, uh, he protects his wealth very much, right? Whenever we don't even ask him for favors because most likely he's not gonna uh, do it based on our previous assumptions, right? So because of that, that thinking that, you know, we already know and expect the outcome, um, we tend to default to certain biases. And as well as desirability bias is we tend to hope for, uh, we tend to be biased on the things that we like. For example, if we like a person, uh, we tend to value his or her opinions more, right? Versus someone who we totally dislike, even though he or she may have really good thoughts, really good ideas because of the you know, the desirability bias of this, we don't like him or her, uh, we tend to discredit him right away. 
anything that he or she is saying. And the opposite is true. If we like a person, we look up to that person, or tama, or we're we're influenced by accepting his or her opinions or thoughts by default, just because of that desirability bias. So again, uh, very similar to the book summary of um, what was that book again? Forty Eight Laws of Power, right? Uh, we're in, you know, we tend to default to these biases. And the fourth takeaway is the key benefits of confidence humility. So I think this is a new term to me, uh, but in general, it means that we must value truth over pride, meaning uh, we shouldn't we shouldn't let our pride take over uh, if we do find truthful information, right? So. Don't be afraid to revise your stance based on new information. It's actually a healthy practice for you to continuously try to dis discredit yourself or disprove your initial assumptions. So haven't we all been in that situation wherein we made a public declaration and you know because of that public declaration where um, we tend to, to uh, stand our ground despite receiving new information, we tend to discredit contrarian ideas because you know we identify ourselves with with our opinion so i forgot which book i read but basically um, i think it's one of jeff bezos who mentioned that uh, winners are right all the time not because that they don't shift strategies but because they're able to quickly adapt and shift strategies uh, depending on the new information that they receive Right. So again, the aim is not to prove yourself, but it's to prove. It's to aim, the aim should be to improve uh, your initial thoughts, assumptions, and ideas, and even execution. So I think the third bullet point is don't attach your views to your identity. I think this is very uh, key and vital uh, for you to have a think again mindset, wherein uh, do not def default by uh, purely associating yourself to the idea again. Uh, you made that idea based on the information that you had at that time. If in case you do receive information or new information that may discredit your initial stance, uh, you should be more receptive and actually, um, you know, disassociate yourself from your initial uh, declaration or stance and be willing to change strategies or even opinions. And the lastly, and lastly is beware of the hippo. So what it means is highest person opinion. So haven't we be, been all in that meeting wherein, you know, we always tend to default to the idea of the person who was the highest ranking officer, maybe the president, CEO, director, and so on and so forth, right? So we must be aware that not necessarily uh, the, the most senior person in the room has the greatest idea. I think it's a good practice to have a culture wherein the best idea wins, regardless of who uh, the idea came from, may it be from the rank and file all the way to the top executive management. Have a culture of not who's the highest, not give uh, too much emphasis on the highest uh, person's opinion, but rather who has the best idea. And again, the quote from the famous uh, Jeff Bezos is, if you don't change your mind frequently, you will be wrong a lot. Again, winners are always right, not just because um, they have their Nostradamus and can forecast the future, right? It's about being able to quickly shift, quickly adapt, and be agile enough to shift strategies depending on the information you have on hand. Again, and don't associate yourself too much with your initial views. And the lastly is a thought-provoking question, right? Is Jeff Bezos dumb for asking this? So, did you? I'll quickly play it. Uh, we had so many orders that we weren't ready for that we had a. a, a we had no real organization in our distribution centers at all. In fact, we didn't. Um, we were packing on our hands and knees on a hard concrete floor, and the, uh, the the I remember just to show you how stupid I can be. I was, you know, it, it, my only defense is that it was late, but I, we were packing these things. Everybody, everybody in the company, 
and the and I had this brainstorm. And as I said to the person next to me, this packing is killing me. You know, my back hurts. This is killing my knees on this this hard cement floor. And the person said, Yeah, I know what you mean. And I said, You know what we need? This is my brilliant insight. We need knee pads. <laughs> I was very serious. And, and um, this person looked at me like I was the stupidest person they'd ever seen. They're like, I'm working for this person. This is great. <laughs> and um, said, what we need is packing tables. <laughs> and I, I looked at this... <laughs> I looked at this person and I thought that was the smartest idea I'd ever heard. The, the next day we got packing tables and I think we doubled our productivity. Um, that early stage, by the way, of Amazon.com where we were so unprepared is probably one of the luckiest things that ever happened to us because it formed a culture of customer service in every department of the company, every single person in the company because we had to work with our hands so close to the customers. Making making sure those orders went out, uh, really set up a culture that served us well. And that is our goal to be Earth. So, yeah. So if you notice the, you know, the knee pad story of Jeff Bezos, if you're to think in the 90s, you know, who would have thought that a small company like Amazon will grow to this behemoth largest, one of the most, um, one of the most valuable countries in, uh, companies in the world, right? And even a simple question like that, uh, you know, uh, being humble enough to understand that, uh, you know, your idea is completely dumb uh, and, you know, other people have better ideas. Uh, the, the having that mindset of, of, of not getting too, uh, not letting your ego run, wherein you're okay for your idea to, uh, what do you call this? you're okay to ha have another person's idea be better than yours, right? So don't be afraid to ask stupid questions. Sometimes through stupid questions, quote unquote, you're able to uncover better solutions. So again, continuously try to disapprove yourself, uh, seek new information and better evidence. And perhaps you can look for through research, your peers. Uh, there's a term called this this confirming evidence, like I kept mentioned earlier, right? And complete continuously revise and test. So ask these stupid questions through repetition. You'll be able to find out, um, you know, the best solution forward or the best way forward. So I think having that mindset, you know, consistently uh, looking for new information, not being afraid to disconfirm your previous beliefs, and always revise and test would propel you to greater heights, right? So even Jeff Bezos asks questions like this, ask dumb questions like this, right? But through this uh, mindset, through this humble confidence, humility, he was able to grow Amazon from a very small con company to a large behemoth it is today, right? And lastly, is I summarize the key takeaways. So the first one is, why we must think like a scientist, again, like scientists, is whenever they have a theory, they first identify, in any experiment, they identify a hypothesis. Their pre, their projections uh, of what the experiment may, the outcome of the experiment may happen, right? And they try to disprove this by disproving the null hypothesis. The second one is the preacher, prosecutor, politician, and scientist. So basically, you know, preacher, we try to promote our ideas. Prosecutor is we focus on discrediting other people's ideas, contradictory to ours. Politician is we try to gain as much support as we can. And scientist is rather having a mindset of openness, of you know receiving information and continuously testing and trying to look for better information to uh, in further improve our experiment, for example. The third one is pitfalls of confirmation and desirability bias. We must be aware that we shouldn't, you know, be biased to whom or what we like. Desirability bias and confirmation is what we already expect, right? Try to avoid those biases. The third one, a uh, fourth one is confidence humility. So again, being humble enough to accept that you may be wrong. There may be a better way. And lastly is Jeff Bezos uh, was a great highlight of 
confidence humility wherein he was uh you know bold enough even as the ceo he was bold enough to ask the question stupid question as it may seem uh you know they were able to find a better solution because of that so again don't be afraid to ask dumb questions and again uh that is book summary number five uh think again by adam grant so this is my fifth book and stay tuned for next week again i do a weekly summary targeting 52 books by the end of 2021 if you like this summary we have a lot more summaries uh in my youtube channel please follow like and subscribe paulo balinas on youtube to view the other books so thank you and have a great day again that's all